Hi guys, so today we're going to be talking about my childhood signs of EDS. So I know a lot of you watch these videos because you have EDS too and there will also be a lot of you that are wondering if you have EDS and so I'll be also telling you how big of a concern each of these things are because I know in my previous videos there was something very mild that I said that could be caused by hypermobility, for example, which is one in five people. And so really nothing to worry about, but it had made them worry. And so I will be being more clear this time. For the most part, these things aren't on the criteria. And so they're things that if you know you have EDS, EDS is the cause because EDS causes your tissues to be, basically your joints, tissues, everything to be more lax, more stretchy, and so it can cause these things, but hypermobility also can. And so that's why, even though these can be signs of EDS, a lot of them can be a sign of hypermobility or even several other things. So we'll discuss that as we go into it and hopefully that will help. So the first one I've written down is skin stretchiness. So my skin is actually not very stretchy compared to a lot of people's. It's really not that stretchy. However, when I was at school, me and some friends were plaiting our hair and when I would plait my hair, they would notice that the skin was pulling out really far from my head and just say, oh, that's a bit strange. And we were sort of laughing about it and just like comparing things like that and even like pulling your ears out. Um, so, even though my skin is not particularly stretchy, because it was quite a lot stretchier than theirs, it was something that we noticed. But as a child, you wouldn't see something like that and think, oh, that's part of a condition. You just think it's one of those weird things. So if you discover that you have very stretchy skin and you also have symptoms like chronic pain or chronic illness symptoms, I actually would advise getting this one checked out just because stretchy skin is often a good way to see what the connective tissue is like. So it doesn't mean that you're definitely going to have a condition like EDS, but it can indicate those sorts of conditions. And then of course you'll have some people who will have stretchy skin and be asymptomatic. And so it's not always a sign of something else, but especially if you've got other things like pain and illness going on, I would get that one checked out. The next one is horrendous popping, cracking, grinding joints. Now, mine and my brother's were really, really severe to the extent that we were going to the doctors about it because it was causing us pain, but it was also just so intense. Like I couldn't get through a PE lesson without people commenting on it. And my brother, his was more so going upstairs. <laughs> he could not walk up the stairs quietly to save his life. He was just so loud. So yeah, for us, it was a sign of instability but for most people it isn't. So doctors will generally say that popping sounds are okay. Not always though, because it could be a subluxation in very rare cases, but in the vast majority of people, popping is absolutely fine. But if you've got grinding noises and if you've got pain, or if you can physically see your joint moving, then I would get that one checked out as well. The next one I have is fainting and presyncope. So as a child, <laughs> I would sometimes faint. I fainted in hairdressers and in a few other situations. At the hairdressers, I was too small to sit on the chair and so they had me standing up. And it was a very weird situation because I didn't get diagnosed with POTS until much, much later. But actually that probably was a POTS type situation going on there. So the reason that fainting and presyncope can be a sign of EDS is because in some cases, your blood vessels will be too stretchy and it will mean your blood will pull down to the lower half of your body and then the lack of oxygen to the brain can make you pass out. So in those cases, the fainting would be caused by EDS and in me, that was the case. However, if you only fainted once as a child, I probably wouldn't flag that as any cause for concern. But if you were fainting more regularly, I would be a little bit concerned about that and I'd be wondering what's going on. Could it be EDS? Could it be orthostatic hypertension? That's when you stand up and you get low blood pressure. Could it be a heart problem? Yeah, so basically with that one, I just think it could indicate EDS, but even if it doesn't, you might wanna get that checked out anyway, just because it often is a cardiac or a blood pressure type thing. Um, and it's not normal to be fainting regularly. The next one I have 
is my good old friend nausea and vomiting if you watch my channel you will know i really struggle with this now but i did as a child as well and as a child we put down the nausea and vomiting down to me being a child my dad would say things like oh children overheat easily so you've probably just been sick because of that we come up with so many excuses for it another one was that i had insomnia and we would say oh i probably feel sick and vomit a lot because i'm tired we would say things like that as well just come up with any excuse under the sun to explain why i was such a sicky child why i was feeling sick and vomiting so much but actually you shouldn't feel sick all the time that's not a normal thing especially for children they're meant to be full of energy and stuff like that so if you were feeling sick all of the time i would be thinking i wonder if something was going on there again this could be caused by anything a common one actually for children is anxiety school can make children anxious and just different things are very scary for children aren't they so that makes a lot of sense and i know a lot of children will go through chronic nausea because of anxiety but if you know that you weren't anxious in those times because you definitely know if you were just sitting at home with your family and you felt comfortable with your family but you were still constantly feeling sick then that's probably a sign that something wasn't right could be eds could not be eds but still i wouldn't say that's a normal thing to go through you shouldn't be feeling sick all the time next on my list is temperature dysregulation i've spoken about this in the past and how i've had it my whole life and I have so many memories of this being an issue. So when I was at school, the boys had a heated, we had a swimming pool at our school and the boys had a heating changing room and the girls didn't just because of a issue with the building. The girls heating wasn't working and there was a teacher there, but I got put in the boys changing room. I know that sounds a bit funny, but you know, it was all fine. There was like towels up and everything, but I was the only girl that was so unbelievably cold I was just shivering and shaking so much that they actually moved me into the boys changing room because I was much colder than the other children and then this continued and even as a teen it didn't go away <laughs> um, and so if I went to parties where girls it's, it's so embarrassing but the pain was so physically painful for me and we've since measured it with a thermometer at university my friends would notice how ridiculously cold I would get and for how long I would get cold and I just wouldn't warm up and so they'd be like putting their hands on top of mine to try and warm my hands up and then we checked it with a thermometer and actually my whole temperature was much lower where my body just can't regulate it so as I was saying <laughs> if there were parties that were outside in the cold there would be girls wearing like beautiful dresses and stuff and I would have to keep my coat on because I just couldn't bear the cold otherwise. And I have a few photos of that where everyone is in their outfits. This one was a fancy dress party. And then there's me in my coat. <laughs> and it did also go the other way. So I would also overheat and get way too hot and not be able to cool down. I went to Greece when I was about 13 and we really noticed it then. I ended up being unwell for a few of the days just because my body just couldn't cope with the heat. And then fortunately we stayed right by the sea and so for the rest of the holiday i just had to make sure that i was <laughs> staying in the sea all the time to cool down because if i didn't i would just overheat and get really unwell so with this one should it be a cause for concern if you have this should you be thinking oh i might have eds i would say no for this one i would say this one is a very low level of concern a lot of people do just run cold or run hot or are sensitive to the cold and the hot. I have friends that aren't even hypermobile and they still have this issue. And so this one isn't even linked to hypermobility. Now that I'm thinking about it, it makes sense because actually this is to do with the autonomic nervous system. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Like if this was my only symptom, I wouldn't go to the doctors about it because I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be overly concerned by it. Again, if you do have lots of other symptoms, chronic pain, chronic illness, those sorts of things then maybe i would say to get checked out but if this is your only thing then i wouldn't be concerned the next one is stretch marks with minimal weight gain so i was covered in stretch marks and i still do have a lot although they faded but 
my hips and waist were just covered in stretch marks and they still are but then i also had them in other places as well like my stomach and i had them in a lot of places <laughs> we'll just say that and that was another thing that a few people had commented on and i mean i don't know if they should have said it but people had said to me oh have you gained a lot of weight or have you lost weight or people did ask about it but actually no i had no rapid weight gain no weight loss nothing like that but those were the questions people were asking me when they would see them but actually it's most likely down to my eds that i got them so significantly like i would just have them this is awkward because there's an area of the body that i'm trying not to say you might know what it is had stretch marks all there and in a bikini very very noticeable but again having said that loads of my friends had this same issue and they don't have eds most of them are hypermobile so it makes me wonder if that one is more common in hypermobile people makes sense because if you're hypermobile then things are going to be more stretchy like your skin your joints and everything so yeah stretch marks were actually quite a common thing at school and so i wouldn't see that one as a major cause for concern and then again if you've been in pain your whole life and you have all these other symptoms then maybe it is a sign of something else and maybe you could bring that up with the doctor as well the second to last thing i have to discuss is Raynaud's. so Raynaud's is where your hands i think it's just it's mainly your hands will go blue or white in response to the cold so mine has actually got a lot better over time and i get it less regularly now as a child my hands were constantly blue they were either blue or purple and then in Raynaud's you can also have your fingers go white as well i didn't see that in myself but i don't know if that was a skin color thing my hands would go gray <laughs> i remember that but never white i never saw them looking just pale they did always look either gray blue or purple but most commonly it was just blue looking my hands were just so blue and in one of my classes we were in these things called mobiles and it was i guess a mobile classroom which was away from the main building and they were cold and so my hands were, <laughs> were blue and so i took it to my teacher and was like what do i do about this and I, i'm pretty sure i knew it was from the cold but i didn't express that and my teacher told me to put it in a cup <laughs> of cold water um so i sat there with my hands in cups of cold water thinking this is only gonna make it worse and it was only after i sat down and did it i thought mm, i should probably tell her that i think it's from the cold and so we tipped the glasses away and we didn't do anything about it yeah we didn't do anything i didn't put my coat on i'm thinking about it now if i had a child in my classroom with that i probably would have advised them to wear gloves or put a coat on but we just left it and i just had blue hands that winter this also makes me squeamish when i look it up i looked at a few pictures before doing this video and like i can't bear to look at it and when it was on myself i didn't feel quite as bad and again i think my skin color helped because the blue wasn't <laughs> as as vivid or as bold um, but now i can't look at the photos of people with like the blue hands i can look at the ones with white but yeah the blue like really cringes me out to see that and as i said thankfully now i'm older i actually don't experience this one as much anymore i do commonly have my nails go blue and i don't think don't think that's Raynaud's. But yeah, when I'm cold now, more commonly it will be my nails that go blue and not my actual hands. So with this one, the NHS website says other conditions can cause Raynaud's, certain medications can cause Raynaud's and working with vibrating tools can cause Raynaud's. And lastly, we have my good old friend, dental overcrowding and also just dental problems. So I did look up the list of things and there were just so many but there's almost no point me reading them all out because there were just loads but i know that dental overcrowding is a very common one i had it myself i had braces for it and it was a whole big thing i have a video on my <laughs> my experience with braces because as someone with eds my experience was terrible and a lot of people with eds also had terrible experiences with braces so if you have eds 
I would recommend watching this video if you're thinking about getting braces. It might just give you some things to think about. As there are also a couple of ways around some of the things I went through, like it doesn't have to be as terrible as it was for me. And so maybe that video will be helpful. But yeah, dental problems. And as you can probably imagine, these are going to be common in the whole, in the rest of the population as well. And it would only be alongside pain and other chronic illness symptoms that you might think, oh, I wonder if that is a symptom of something else. So that's my list. Those were my childhood signs of EDS. Let me know some of yours or let me know if you have any concerns or questions. I can answer those in the comments below. Give this a like if you liked it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.